Yes, he was also called Levi. Hmm, that sounds interesting. All right then, let's begin with the story. Matthew was the son of Alphaeus, and he lived in Capernaum, and his name meant a gift of God. The call of Matthew to the band of Jesus' disciples is of great importance. Matthew's other name was Levi, which was probably given by Jesus when he became a disciple. Matthew was a tax collector and a publican. He was engaged in public service work and gathered the taxes which the people paid. However, in those times, the Jews hated the tax gatherers because they believed that it was the right of the people to pay taxes as a tribute only to God. Paying it to someone else meant breaking of the law. The Jews hated the tax gatherers, not only for this religious reason, but also because they were very unjust and unfair towards them. The Jews regarded these tax collectors nothing less than criminals. Matthew was one of them. Like every other tax collector, he would assess taxes for their people and also lend them money and charge high rates of interest from them. Yet, Jesus chose him from amongst all the hated men and made him one of his own. Being the master, he saw the potential in the tax collector of Capernaum. Matthew was different from all the other disciples of Jesus, who were mostly fishermen. He knew how to write, and with the power of the pen, he brought to the world the teaching of Jesus in the Hebrew language. The apostolic symbol of Matthew is three money bags, which help us to remember that he was a tax collector before Jesus called him. That was quite an interesting story, Holy. The Holy Tales Today I'm going to tell you the story about Jesus' last and final disciple, Thomas Didymus. Didymus? It's Thomas Didymus, Tubby. Thomas Didymus was one of the lesser known disciples of Jesus. He lived in Galilee and went to preach Jesus' words in Parthia, Persia, and India, and probably received death as a martyr near Madras at Mount St. Thomas in India. Thomas was his Hebrew name and Didymus his Greek name. At times, he was also called Judas. The Bible does not tell us much about Thomas except his name, However, John in his Gospel defines him more clearly as being present in the raising of Lazarus in the upper room. He wanted to see nail prints in Jesus' hand and also the spear scar in his side to believe in him. Soon, he was known as the Doubting Thomas. Thomas had a bewildered and confused mind and yet he was brave and courageous. Since he was a pessimistic man, he believed only in things which he could see. However, he had immense faith and was a devoted man. When Jesus rose from death, he came and invited Thomas to put his finger in the nail prints in his hand and in his side. It is here we see Thomas making the greatest confession of faith and Thomas's doubts transformed into faith. In India, Thomas was commissioned to build a palace for the king of India where he was martyred to death with a spear for his lord. His apostolic sign is a bunch of spears, stones and arrows. So, did you like the story? Oh yes, 
It was wonderful. We loved it. The Holy Tales. Hello, children. I just saw what happened, and I know the perfect story to tell you today. It's about the mustard seed that Jesus told his followers for them to understand better. Woohoo! Can't wait! Can't wait! Once, a man planted a very tiny mustard seed in his garden. The seed was one and very tiny, but he knew that the seed was the beginning of something great. Days and months went by. And the seed grew into a little plant. It grew a little every day. The man took care of it without giving up on it, thinking that it is just one seed. Years went by, and soon the plant grew up to be a huge tree. Birds flew in and sat on the branches of the tree. The man was very happy and content. Jesus explained the story to his followers. The kingdom of God is like the single mustard seed that the man had planted. It may look very small and tiny at the beginning, but waiting patiently will bear wonderful fruit and happiness. So, it is always important to do little things, and God will make them grow. Never ever give up thinking that whatever you do is little and would not make a difference in the kingdom of God. That was such a nice story, Holly. I'm glad you liked it, Gumbo. Hope you enjoyed the story too, as much as we did. We shall be back soon. Keep watching. Until next time. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Hidden plants and trees. On the fourth day, God created the sun to shine in the day, the moon and stars to come out at night. One day, Moses went to Mount Horeb with his sheep. There, God appeared to him as a flame of fire in a bush. Since there was no room anywhere else, they decided to spend the night in a stable. Here, Mary had her baby, Jesus. She wrapped him in a blanket and put him to sleep. He's got the whole world.